there was this feeling that you couldn't get uh, spin echoes to occur in solids. Uh, you could in liquids because the decay time was so long, I mean, relatively speaking, uh, a, a liquid <coughs> free induction decay would last maybe 50, 60 milliseconds, whereas in a solid the free induction decay lasted 30, 40, 50 microseconds. So the feeling was that there, there wouldn't be uh, the possibility of generating an echo in a solid. And um, so, you know, there wasn't really much to read. There was plenty on liquids, but nothing much on solids. I mean, people could see free induction decays in solids, but no one, it seemed, had thought of uh, you know, trying to get a signal and a an echo. But the apparatus that I built uh, had a recovery time which was about um, three or four microseconds. So you had a one microsecond pulse, there was a recovery time of, of about two or three microseconds, and then after that you could see the signal. And but it wasn't a coherent signal. So, in other words, you, you put in one pulse and there was no electronic coherence because I was pulsing the oscillator on and off that created the uh, RF. Uh, you know, this, this was how I managed to produce very, very short high power pulses. But um, one day um, I, I, I decided to just try putting in two pulses, and I managed to get two pulses uh, fairly close together within about five microseconds, one and then the second pulse. And I noticed that there was a huge jitter on the scope. I set to work to try to introduce some coherence between the two pulses and managed to actually do this by very careful timing. Uh, so I had a timing uh, circuit which I could inch along until I got the phase just right. And when I did that, I found that I got a decay, looking at it from your way, a decay that came down here, then a pulse, second pulse, and I could bring this down to zero, there was nothing, but if I inched the pulse along a little bit to get a different phase relationship, I would get a signal which started to grow. And this was, uh, you know, I, I went along to Jack Powell's and showed him this, and his first reaction was, there's something wrong with the electronics. He said, no, you, you know, you can't get an echo. There's a, this is a recovery problem that there's just the receiver's recovering. Uh, and it looks like an echo, but it's not really an echo. But um, I didn't believe that. So we uh, sent away to buy a single crystal of, uh, of material. I mounted it on the probe and uh, tried these double pulse experiments. And sure enough, uh, when I got the phase right, I could get uh, an echo. And when I got it wrong, uh, I got nothing. So I got a zero response or an echo. And um, I showed these results to Jack. And uh, he said, well, you know, this should be easy, well, a lot easier to work out than what you were doing because uh, I was trying to do the many body problem. And whereas in calcium sulfate, you've only got two molecules uh, of water. So, you know, the calculation is a lot easier. And there are orientations of the crystal where these two molecules give the same signal in a certain orientation. So it became, uh, you know, almost, not trivial, but a, a much easier problem. So we published a paper on this, and this was the birth of solid echoes.